What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, Spartans of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today we're talking about something completely different, Halo Infinite. Now I have a lot of opinions on 343 and their development of Halo, and the various announcements around Halo Infinite in particular, but I figured I'd start things off on a high note and talk about Halo Infinite's ranked play. The goal of any competitive game should be to strive for the most competitive modes to be as fair and balanced as possible, and most games that consider themselves competitive do just that, or they make a tangible effort to at least try to do that. As I'm talking about competitive games, games like Valorant, CSGO, or Overwatch at least in its early years might be coming to mind, but even what some might consider more casual games, like Pokemon, have rules for how teams can be set up and what can and cannot be used in ranked play, or their online tournaments. Games like Warhammer 40k have stringent rules for how armies can be built, and what their composition and makeup can be, books upon books outlining abilities, or special rules, or secondary objectives. Card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! have ban list, Magic the Gathering has set rotation, and these are rules that people often adhere to, even in casual play. Because it's fair and it's balanced. From games as old as Go and Chess, to modern games like Halo Infinite, people will try to find the most fair and balanced and competitive way to play that game. Now that's not to say that these things are always successful. Warhammer 40k consistently has to FAQ things, games like Yu-Gi-Oh consistently ban things after they've been released, or they correct text, or they FAQ rulings. Pokemon is always adding new features in Pokemon that utterly break the game, and it takes them forever to limit or ban them in competitive play. And often, these things can be chalked up to basically, the overpowered thing sells the DLC or game or card pack and will be dealt with later. But largely, as an ideal, games in their ranked and competitive modes should be as competitive as possible. Which brings us to the subject of today's video, Halo Infinite. Recently, 343 announced its competitive ranked settings. BR starts, motion tracker disabled, grenade hit markers disabled, played in the game modes of Team Slayer, CTF, Strongholds, and Oddball. To me, that sounds great. The maps will also have curated weapon and equipment spawns to reduce the amount of shenanigans possible because that's what you should strive for when you're creating a playlist where performance matters. And not just your own personal ranking, but that of your teammates that you're matched with, right? Right? People wouldn't really bitch that the ranked playlist wasn't just the standard playlist, but with skill-based matchmaking, which the standard playlist will already have, making that entire practice redundant. People wouldn't complain about the competitive playlist being competitive, right? Right? Oh dear lord god, no way, okay. The announcement of the Halo rank settings was met with a mixed reaction from the Halo community. From what I saw, you had two sides of this argument. People who love these changes, and people who don't. Kinda self-explanatory? I know, but let me extrapolate. The people who love the fact that the ranked playlist isn't just the casual playlist, but with skill-based matchmaking, will point out that, one, this is a V1 iteration of the playlist, meaning that any grievances could very well be changed along the way, from iteration to iteration. Second, these settings provide a fair and balanced arena for what is supposed to be a competitive playlist. Third, these rules create new opportunities within the sandbox that normal play simply doesn't allow. A back hydro, you're gonna be able to pick up, we're gonna see some sword and some equipment play, so this is probably a good opportunity to talk about some of the equipment balance yep. in the game. So right here I pair repulsor and sword Oof. to use to get some creative shortcuts here. And right. That guy had no idea, so that movement, that shortcut, mixed in with no uh, motion tracker. This allows you to make crazy plays like that, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many pieces to talk about there. Just the fact that you can creatively go from bottom middle all the way up to top A like that with the sword. Like you said, if someone is watching motion tracker in a competitive setting, they're going to be watching that doorway. That, that play doesn't really happen yep. in those settings, so it's pretty fantastic to see. And by the way, everyone's just running away from you with their... Let's see them try to take it from us. Sure, here's another camo pickup. Sal, you guys have really been on top of that camo and activated immediately. And probably the most interesting thing to talk about there, right, is the lack of grenade hit markers that that player would have had in that situation. Yep, exactly. So that player actually had no idea how much damage he was actually doing or if he was even hitting me. Yeah. He had to go out of his way to make sure that I was weak and get the kill on me. My play right there was to make him waste as much time as possible and to put him in a spot where my teammates could get the cleanup trade on him. 
Absolutely, and that's a situation that plays out completely differently with both Motion Tracker and Grenade Hit Markers on. Also forces that player to even spend those grenades, yeah, right? Exactly. So it really changes the way that that plays out. It allows you to have so much more power as a player there. You're burning camo, you're spending that player's grenades, and you're also taking that player out of the situation. There's probably at least going to be a trade there, and it really changes the way that all that plays out. Yep. Four, skill-based matchmaking will be part of the default playlist. So everything will have skill-based matchmaking, from Social Slayer to Big Team Battle. Two, hypothetically, even zombies and griff ball, and everything in between. Meaning, unlike Halo 3, there's no true social experience. By default, every playlist will essentially play like Halo 3 ranked play. Now, I actually disagree with this. I don't think skill-based matchmaking has any place in social playlists, purely because there are going to be a lot of air quote, good players who, for example, have friends that are not good players. With skill-based matchmaking in the social playlist, you've just made the experience of two players with vastly different skill sets playing together a terrible experience. Mostly for the player of lower skill, the person that the entire system is designed to protect. Personally speaking, in a social environment, I would rather occasionally get pub stomped than have players who want to play together but avoid doing so because the experience will be an overall bad one. I'd also argue it makes it harder to get new people into the game and to stay because if they're playing solo, they're having a fine experience. But I would argue that most people come to multiplayer games to play with their friends. But I digress. The point is, skill-based matchmaking is already implemented by default in every playlist in Halo Infinite. So having the ranked playlist just be normal Team Slayer but with skill-based matchmaking, when Team Slayer with skill-based matchmaking already exists, would be redundant. And lastly, while Halo is traditionally known for having a plethora of playlists, having 15 to 20 different playlists in most games has largely gone out of fashion. And there's a reason for this, playlist population. While a game might be able to support 20 different playlists at release, even six months later, the story is going to be extremely different. So most companies have made the right call in condensing down their playlist offerings to a handful of playlists. And while this might not please everybody, the reality is it works in keeping these playlists populated. It keeps matches close in regards to skill-based matchmaking, it keeps wait time between matches down, and for games that need it, that are peer-to-peer, -peer, it keeps connection quality good. There are more pros to the new ranked system, and honestly, I could go on and on. Like, for example, having the ranked playlist mirror the HCS format, which, for those of you who do not know because every video is somebody's first, the Halo Championship series creates a familiarity between both the event and the game being played so there's no confusion, which also has lots of benefits. Now you can watch people playing at the highest levels of competition and do what they do, learn to do what they do, and incorporate that into your own repertoire, something older Halos just couldn't do because the MLG settings were significantly different from the default setting. Learning to hit a jump spot by watching one of the best players in the world do it means absolutely nothing when they have to buff movement speed in the MLG settings by 25%. But what are the cons? Well, first, it's not like Halo 3. The argument basically outlines the idea that in Halo 3, you could select how you wanted to play ranked. If you wanted to play Team Hardcore or MLG, that was a playlist. If you wanted to play Team Slayer, which was just normal Slayer, but with skill-based matchmaking, you could play that as well. However, you'll notice an issue with that because skill-based matchmaking is part of the default settings. Social Team Slayer already functions exactly like ranked Team Slayer because skill-based matchmaking. So why would you have two of the exact same modes? Another argument I've seen is not everybody likes the HCS MLG playstyle. Well, of course not everybody's going to like the playstyle. I'm not a fan of dark chocolate or cheese. Cilantro tastes like soap to me. Everybody is going to have different taste. Saying something like not everybody likes that playstyle is kind of dumb. Not everybody likes Halo, so they go play Call of Duty or Destiny or Battlefield. But even if we're just talking about people who like Halo, well, I don't like Griffball or Zombies. In fact, I'm not a huge fan of most of the party games. But that's the brilliant thing about Halo. You don't have to play something if you don't like it. You can go play something else. But Joker! I uh, hear you cry out. What if somebody wants the ranked experience but doesn't like the curated ranked playlist? Again, the default playlist will match people based on skill. So, if your goal is to have equally balanced matches, but to have access to things like the auto rifle or the radar, that experience is already there. But Joker! I hear you cry out. I don't get a symbol that signifies my ranking next to my name if I just play the normal playlist. 
Yeah, this is one of the pettier grievances I've seen. People want the clout for playing in the competitive playlist, but don't want to play the most competitive iteration of the game, because they don't like that version of the game. To me, as a Destiny player, this is kind of amusing, because in Destiny, we have the Trials of Osiris. Now, because every video is somebody's first, and I'm sure there's a lot of Halo players or people interested in Halo that are watching this video that might not play Destiny, so they don't know what the Trials of Osiris is, the Trials of Osiris is essentially Destiny 2's competitive endgame playlist. Instead of being the normal 6v6 control offering or team deathmatch with extra steps, the Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 elimination style game type. The goal is to be the first team to win 5 rounds. You try to repeat this for 7 games without losing so you can go to the lighthouse and collect some loot. Personally, I hate this style of gameplay, but if the Trials of Osiris has loot that I want, I pull up my thong, I straighten up my stockings, and I get to grinding. I mean, wait, what? The problem with worrying about having a ranked symbol next to your name in a 343 Halo game is that 343 has consistently held the design mantra of not showing your rank outside the immediate ranked playlist. This isn't Halo 3 where everybody can see your 50. Not that it matters how high you climb up in the ranks, because 343 also resets ranks. So the number in and of itself doesn't matter. The last argument I've seen is that the competitive playlist, because it's so curated, will limit Halo Infinite's already reduced sandbox. Yeah, that's kind of the point. That's a good thing. By the nature of being competitive, you're going to want the competitive game mode to be as fair and balanced as possible. This means removing things from the sandbox that are easily abused or crutched on. A competitive game mode should be a game mode that rewards technical skill, precision, map knowledge, and team communication over luck. So it absolutely makes sense that a competitive game mode would want to whittle down variables. More so when skill-based matchmaking is already enabled in modes that will offer the totality of the sandbox. There's not really a good argument, considering the default playlist has skill-based matchmaking, as to why the competitive playlist shouldn't be the most competitive iteration of the game. If Halo Infinite had a true social experience, I could understand why people would be mad about these changes, but that's not the case. There is skill-based matchmaking in every playlist, so every playlist will essentially be a ranked playlist. But those are going to be my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. And above all else, stay frosty.